Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Heavenly Friday, Holy Communion Service. Hallelujah. Amen. You are heavenly welcome. Amen. Welcome in the house. Welcome to the Lord's table. Amen. Come and dine. Let us wine. Let us rejoice the body and the blood of our great high priest jesus christ Amen. my name is apostle joseph samuel king and this is my lovely wife apostle sarah king amen. hallelujah amen she is a woman of god hallelujah amen. there are some uh, people who are ignorant of the covenant we are in and therefore they cannot understand the ministry of christ jesus and they say how is it a woman is an apostle they said Jesus had 12 apostles. None of them was a woman. All of them were men. And the reason they go on like that is because they do not understand the covenant of Christ, nor do they understand the ministry of Christ. Yes. They do not know, for instance, that Mary Magdalene was actually an apostle, and she was a favorite one of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the gospel, according to John, Christian history tells us, was written mostly with the consultation of Mary Magdalene. You remember Mary, who was washing the feet of our Lord with her tears and the alabaster box of perfume. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus said everywhere the gospel is prayed, it will be mentioned as a memorial for her sake. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the one who, again, Jesus said, she chose the better part. Well, Mary was an apostle, according to history records from the early church. She was an apostle, and there were other apostles that were women. You need to understand the covenant of Christ to understand his ministry. Those who question women in the ministry are usually informed by the wisdom of this world. In, uh, you know, thinking women shouldn't be in the ministry and shouldn't be called to be apostles, and they like to quote the Apostle Paul without wisdom. Listen to this. In this covenant, we are all in Christ, neither male nor female. Every weakness we had as women were counseled by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Every advantage we had as men were overtaken by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so in Christ Jesus, we are called into the ministry of Christ Jesus as ministers of eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that is how those you reckon to be women can actually be called to be apostles because Jesus redeemed women from the curse of Eve, even as he has redeemed men from the curse of Adam. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so in Christ Jesus, we are free. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Amen. Christ which strengthens me. So yes, women can be apostles. Women can be prophets. Women can be evangelists. Women can be pastors. And I'm glad mine here is Apostle Sarah King, with whom I am glad to minister Christ Jesus with you tonight. She's an, a, a, a mighty woman of God in her own right, called of God and uh, uh, carries an anointing. And I'm telling you, it has always been a delight to feature with her in the ministry of Christ. She's Amen. the answered prayer. When I called on God and I needed a helpmate, I said, God, specifically, I need a woman with whom I can serve you with. And this is about our 26th Heavenly Friday Holy Communion service, and we have been uh, several times, most of the time together, ministering to you. And tonight, honey, tonight, yes. hallelujah, amen. This is the party. Come on, someone said, This is the party. This is the party. Jubilee. Jubilee. Come on, say, Jubilee. Jubilee. Tell your neighbor, Jubilee. Jubilee. Do you know Jesus Christ has brought us to the heavenly Jubilee? Amen. That the earthly jubilee that the uh, law of Moses talked about. Mm -hmm. You see, in the law of Moses, every 50th year was a year of jubilee. 
and they celebrated it throughout the year, all debts were cancelled. You were not allowed to claim a debt in the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Now, that Jubilee was a shadow of which the Jubilee Jesus Christ has brought in place mm -hmm. is the light. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are living in that Jubilee. Amen. And you are, are worried about debt. And you are so insistent on your debt being paid because you do not know. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, tonight, we are setting that record straight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is uh, in the covenant of Christ, you are not allowed to have a debt. Mm. Let me say that again. Amen. In the covenant of Christ Jesus, Amen. you are not allowed to have a debt. You are not even allowed to borrow. You borrow because you do not know. You have a debt because you do not know. And let me tell you this. You are not allowed to claim a debt. You are not allowed to claim that pay me what is owed me. You are not allowed. And we are going to be sharing that with you tonight. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that are not allowed are being practiced because of ignorance. People do not know the covenant. I was talking with a dear friend of mine uh, just this evening. And he was telling me how he was visiting a church. And the pastor in that church was teaching the old covenant and he was insisting that everyone in his church must obey the law of Moses. People just do not know. And they do not know and they teach like that because they do not know the covenant Christ mediated for our sake. And they do not know how far reaching, how powerful it is so much that it made the other covenant irrelevant in our life. For instance, I'll just give you an example. In that old covenant, righteousness was by the work of your flesh. It depended on what you do or you did not do according to the instructions given in the law of Moses. So you were considered righteous by your own works, the works of your flesh. In the covenant of Christ, the righteousness that we have is really by the work of Christ Jesus. We are considered righteous not because of our works, not because of our works, but because of the work which Jesus did on the cross and the power of his blood. But a lot of people do not know this. And so if they stumble, they feel they are not righteous. Or if they see others stumbling, they, they consider they are not righteous because they do not know the grace of Christ Jesus. And so many things like this are going on in the church of Jesus Christ and children of God are suffering. Tonight we are addressing the debt question. Mm. The whole world believes it has debts. The whole world, every country in this world believes they have debts. The, the country with the largest debt, the country that believes it has the largest debt is the United States of America. They are actually currently in negotiation for their debt ceiling to reach 51 trillion US dollars. Who is going to help America? I believe someone here tonight is going to catch the revelation, the knowledge, and break the power of the debt over the people of America. Who are really not the people of America? They are the people of God. Because Jesus bought us all. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, it's Jubilee. Tell your neighbor, it's Jubilee. It is Hallelujah. Jubilee. Hallelujah. Call your friends. Call your family. Yes. Tell them it's Jubilee. Okay. No more debt. Debts are cancelled. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jubilee, you are free. And whom the sun sets free is free, free indeed. indeed. And tonight, we want to get into that. Come on, so get on the phone. Call whoever you can. Share the link, share the link, share the link. Tell them, well, there's that beautiful Apostle Sarah and her wonderful husband. They are sharing on debt cancellation, jubilee. The Lord has given us this freedom. So come on, enjoy yourselves tonight at the Lord's table. Amen, amen, amen. That is powerful. Welcome to Jesus Party. Wherever you are watching us from, Karibu Sana, mm. that's what we say here in Kenya. It mm. is Swahili, meaning welcome, welcome, welcome. Asante. <laughs> Asante. It means thank you. Yes, so you're welcome, all of you. 
wherever you're watching us from thank you we have so many people following us from america just to acknowledge them sister sarah nganga thank you for standing even with us sister you're welcome Nikila. you're welcome yes you're welcome. you're welcome yeah we have so many from pakistan oh brothers feel at the feet of jesus welcome Hallelujah. welcome even here in kenya we have a Hallelujah. lot from nairobi from Marsabet from Kitale. Hallelujah. Karibuni sana. Welcome. Mm. Welcome. This is the Lord's table. Yes. Listen to this. This is the Lord's table. And he instructed us to break the bread, drink the cup, mm. and say, do this in remembrance of him. And as we have never tired to tell you, the bread is not the communion. It is the representation of the communion. The cup is not the communion. It is the representation of the communion. What we are celebrating when we break the bread and eat it, and we encourage you, please, go to your kitchen, get an item that you can use to represent the body of our Lord, get a drink that you can use to represent the blood of our Lord. What they represent is the communion. And what we really are celebrating is this communion, God in us and we all in him, all of us together, one with God. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you're not alone tonight. Yes, you may be thinking you are alone, feeling you are alone, but you're not alone tonight. God is with you. Amen. God is in you. Amen. You are in God. Yes. You are with God. Amen. And if God be for us, who oh, can be yes. against us? You have victory Amen. in the communion. Yes. You have power in the communion. Amen. You have glory in the communion. Amen. You have favor in the communion. Amen. Listen to this. You do not need to buy favor from the Lord. Yes. Stop getting money and, 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 and sending it to uh, uh, false prophet so-and-so, false pastor so-and-so, false apostle so-and-so, because they have told you that you need to give God some money and he gives you the gift of favor. No, no, no. You are in the communion of God Almighty. Amen. Whatever is his is yours. Whatever he has, you have. Yes. Whatever you, whatever he is, you are. You are one with God. Do not be afraid. Jesus said, little flock, your heavenly father desires to give you the kingdom. And that's what he did on the cross by the power of the blood of Jesus. Yes. You are in the kingdom. Amen. You are sovereign and divine. Amen. You are a ruling spirit. Amen. You are a heavenly citizen. Yes. And you are therefore having eternal life. You Amen. are one with God. Mm. Whatever is of God is yours. Amen. You don't have to pay money for this. Mm -hmm. You do not have to pay money for increase. You do not have to pay money for prosperity. You do not have to pay money for favor. You do not have to pay money for health. Do, can you imagine there are ministers who are charging the elect of God, the yeah. children of the Most High. They say, send this amount of money. You will get a miracle. You will get a healing. Listen, freely have we received and freely have we given. Yes. I will never forget this case, honey. Mm -hmm. And just talking about Jubilee, I was remembering it today, this uh, morning. There was this sister in the Lord, and she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Three hospitals here in the city of Nairobi said she had a brain tumor. And, you know, they do the x-ray, and there's a, the, the, the x-ray featured that there is a tumor in her brain. And they said you need an operation to remove the tumor before it becomes big, and it causes serious damage, irreparable damage in your brain. And she was very afraid because it was a very costly exercise to go all the way to India and to pay for the kind of operation that they were recommending should be done. And she mentioned this to me. And I said to her, sister, you don't need to go to India. You don't need even to raise the money for the operation. Why? Because Jesus Christ has made you well. Amen. The tumor has disappeared. Amen. And she was like, she, she asked me, just like that? 
You know, people are used to the patterns of this world. You have to pay to get healed. And so they bring it in the church and they think you have to pay even in the church for God to heal you. I said, just like that. And you know, she was still skeptic. Her family was putting pressure on her. And so she went uh, to India. And fortunately in India, at the hospital in Hyderabad, India, they required an uh, X-ray before they, can, they wanted to do their own diagnosis. And when they did their diagnosis, the brain tumor had vanished. The Amen. doctors in India said, there is no brain tumor as far as we know. And they did, she required repetitive tests. She told me they did nine more tests. All of them confirmed the word of the Lord. So if Amen. you are struggling with the tumor tonight, mm. you are struggling with the tumor. Amen. This is a debt free ministry. Amen. This is a collection free ministry. We, we are not going to indebt the children of God, yes. God gave you healing Amen. on the cross yes. and by the power oh, of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so we declare, we speak to that tumor, Amen. disappear Amen. in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, you are you're HIV positive. Mm. We speak to your blood to obey. Amen. You are ferrostatus negative as of now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You have a heart problem. They are telling you, it's amazing we are just beginning the program, but the anointing is present Amen. to heal God's people. Amen. The Holy Spirit is excited about this heavenly Friday. Yes. I believe because we're talking about jubilee Amen. your freedom and so you are you are dealing with a heart problem are, are we speaking to that heart right now Amen. be healed Jesus. in the name of jesus Amen. you have a debt with the doctor mm. to, with the operation theater we cancel that theater Amen. we cancel the operation yes. we declare you healed Amen. in the, the name, name of jesus, jesus and whom the sun sets free is irredeemably, irrevocably, immutably Amen. free indeed. You are free. Amen. I'm speaking to you, sister. Yes. You are free. Amen. I'm speaking to you, brother. Mm. You are free. Yes. Mama, you are free. Amen. You don't need to worry about that problem. Mm. You have been carrying that weight. Come to Jesus. All of you yes. who are weary yes. and heavy laden, yes. he has rest for you. Amen. He has a Sabbath for you. Amen. He has a jubilee for you. Amen. He has a freedom for you. Amen. He has a liberty for you. Yes. Be free. Amen. Be free. Yes. In the name of oh, Jesus, Jesus, be free. Hallelujah. 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 There is someone, your ear has just popped. Mm. You have been deaf in one ear. Mm. Your ear is free. Amen. There is someone, mm. your eyes are not looking well. Yes. Your eyes are cross-eyed. Mm. And right now they are being repaired. Amen. No need to send a gift no. here. No need to send a, a payment here. Mm. I am declaring to you mm. under the anointing of Jesus yes. Christ. Healings are taking place. Amen. People are getting healed. Amen. Everywhere around the world, Hallelujah. wherever you are, mm. take your miracle. Amen. Wherever you are, receive your healing. Receive In the name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The people here, you're wearing your heart. Does God really care about me? You have been tempted and you have been tested, and you have been deceived and plagued with heavy thoughts in your mind, and you wonder, does God really care for me? Mm. Let me tell you the truth, absolute truth. God cares for you far more than you would like him to care for you. And he proved it on the cross by the shedding of the blood of his first begotten. Mm. That is how much God cares for you. Mm. You see, by the shedding of the blood of his first begotten, mm. God gave you everything that is his. That is how much God cares about you. You are not in that problem alone. Let me say that again. Listen carefully. Mm. You are not alone in that challenge. God is with you. Yes. Oh yes, it, I know it seems like a fiery furnace fire that you are going through. Mm. And that's what we are all about tonight. We are dealing with jubilee. We are dealing with the freedom of death. Mm. And some of you have been weighed down until you have no clue what tomorrow holds. Tonight we are telling you, you are free. 
Amen. You are free. Amen. This is the voice of God. Mm. We are speaking as mouthpieces of the Most High. You are free. That Amen. problem vanish now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Now listen to this. We are about to get into the program, into the teaching. We are already into the program, sorry. We are about to get into the teaching. Yes. We love you. We love you so much, but we want you to know this. God loves you even more. The only reason Apostle Sarah and I are here this heavenly Friday, serving you the word of eternal life, is because of God's love. God has honored us with his grace to serve you his love. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a love feast. The communion is the Lord's table and it is a love feast. If you want to eat a kilogram of food to celebrate it, please do. If you're not satisfied with a small piece of bread, please do. <laughs> Listen to this. Amen. It is a love feast. Mm. It is a celebration of God with us, mm. in us, and us in him, with him. That is how rich the communion is. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So get ready to call your friends. Uh, mm. Share the link. Share the link. Yes. Let everybody know that they are free of any debt, of any claim, by the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So just get ready. In about a minute, we are going to be praying, and then we are going to dive, delve into the revelation of the freedom we have from every debt. Get ready, get ready, get ready. God is faithful. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, ensure you uh, bring your family with you. You do not just partake of these blessings alone. Bring your family, the children, spouse, grandparents, mothers, fathers, everyone around you. Please share the, the, this uh, word of God. Share and ensure also you have, as Apostle has said, that have something that represents the body of Christ. Have something that represents the blood of Christ. At the end of this. We will do the practice together. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now listen to this. We are going to pray and get into the word. Are you ready? You love Jesus. We love him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are so kind. You have loved us with an eternal love. And we plead the blood of Christ Jesus tonight as we celebrate the communion. We plead the blood of Christ Jesus tonight that you will afford us the understanding of the richness of your love. Yes, Lord. And how indeed through the sacrifice of Christ you provided us heavenly jubilee. Breaking the power of death over our lives. And so Father tonight we are inviting you to confirm this word with signs and wonders in our lives. Let everyone in the hearing of our voice receive the witness of God and know that they are free of any debt, that they have jubilee, that they walk in the liberty of the Spirit with no fear, for perfect love casts out fear. In Jesus' name and the saints of glory we say, Amen, amen and Amen. amen. Now, saints of the living God, this service is a very serious service. The Spirit of God brought to our attention the plight of so many around the world. Not just individuals, but whole nations are being weighed down with debt. Most nations are unable to pay their debt. Yes. Most nations. I mean, we are in the city of Nairobi, Kenya. Mm. And the Kenyan government mm. is facing peril because they are unable within their own means to resolve their debt crisis. And Kenya is not by any exception the only country in this dilemma 
every country around the world mm. is facing this problem. And it is a problem being faced because nations are ignorant of the covenant that we have with God and sealed by the blood of Jesus. Nations are ignorant. Those who are involved in the administration of these nations. I was seeing the president of Kenya just this week. He was in Israel with a large delegation with the first lady. And they went to the wailing wall. And you know in the wailing wall you, are, you write your prayer request and you can put it. You know you scribble it and, and you put it inside the stone. And he, he had scribbled something for Kenya. You know and he was praying to God. Because he doesn't know. And the ministers do not know. Many ministers who claim to be serving Christ Jesus do not know the covenant God has with his people. When we speak about Jubilee, they do not know. They do not know. Most people think Jubilee ended with the Old Testament. And because it is not particularly mentioned in the new covenant in all the write-ups of the apostles jubilee is not particularly mentioned so it is assumed it ended in the old testament what many do not know is that everything that was in the old testament was a shadow pointing to the new testament to the new covenant which is the light mm. So the jubilee of the Old Testament was a shadow of the jubilee that is the New Testament. Amen. That means you ought to have a richer jubilee than the jubilee that was experienced in the shadow of the Old Testament. Your jubilee should be a light. But many people do not know this. They do not know that there is a jubilee. And that jubilee has come with Christ Jesus who has given us the liberty of the spirit. Jubilee pertains to freedom. Liberty. And in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, you can go and do your own study, uh, research on it. In the year of Jubilee, which, would, which was celebrated every 50th year. In the year of Jubilee, you were not supposed to claim a debt from a debtor. In the year of Jubilee. You were actually supposed to cancel it. You were not even supposed to postpone it to the year after Jubilee. You were required by God, by law, to cancel it. Mm. Are we together? Yes. But in the jubilee of the new covenant, you don't cancel the debt. God canceled it. Amen. Amen. You see the difference? Mm. That's why the jubilee of the Old Testament of the old covenant was a shadow. It had lesser power than the jubilee of the new covenant, which is the light. Mm -hmm. It had lesser power because the one that canceled the debt in the jubilee of the old testament, the one that was required to cancel the debt was the one to whom it was owed. It wasn't God who canceled the debt. God required the one to whom the debt was owed to cancel the debt. But in the new covenant, yes. which is a far better covenant, Amen. established on better promises, Amen. God doesn't require you to cancel the debt. God Cancels the debt himself. Amen. Amen. Are you together with me? The old covenant, mm. God required the work of men. 
for him to fulfill his promises. So he told them a lot of do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. In the new covenant, God does not require the work of man for him to fulfill his promise. God himself has fulfilled his own word that he has given us in the new covenant. Amen. He has fulfilled the gospel. Amen. How so? On the cross and by the power of the blood of Jesus, yes. God has obeyed the gospel. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So in the old covenant, the testament of Moses was what was required by the people to obey it. God said, if you obeyed my word, then I will. If you obey my word, I will lift you up and make you a kingdom. If you obey my word, you will be the head and not the tail. If you obey my word, you shall be blessed in the city and in the countryside. In the new covenant, God is not telling you if you obey my word, God himself obeyed the word he has given Amen. us in the new covenant. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And that is why the apostle Paul understanding this by the spirit in his letter to the church of Corinth says all the promises of God they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? Because God himself has obeyed the gospel by the work of the cross mm -hmm. and by the power of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So you can walk. Mm. You can live in the promises of Christ Jesus. Amen. Because God has obeyed the word. Mm. That was the requirement. All the requirements in the old covenant demanded the obedience of those with whom God was in covenant with. That was the nation of Israel. All the requirements of the old covenant required the obedience if God was going to give them the promises, if they were going to walk in those promises. In the new covenant, God has told you, rest. Amen. Sit, let me do the work. So in the new covenant, Christ has obeyed. <laughs> Christ, that's how God has obeyed his own word. Amen. Christ represented God in obeying the testament and therefore fulfilling the requirements Amen. of that covenant. Hallelujah. Are you seeing that? So for instance, you are not righteous by your work. You are righteous by the obedience of Jesus Christ. You are not justified mm -hmm. by your works. No. You are justified by the obedience of Jesus Christ. Yes. Are, are you understanding that yes. this is important foundation, background, mm -hmm. so that you can understand when we speak about debt cancellation, yes. you ought to understand. And tonight we're in serious business. We are taking over. Amen. We are taking over that debt which has yeah. been weighing you down. Yes. We are taking over the debt mm -hmm. that is weighing cities, that is weighing nations. Yes. This is a serious service. Amen. God is with us. Amen. Why? Because we are believing the truth yes. and we are ministering the truth. Mm. This is not a lie. I want you to get this carefully. In the New Testament, mm. you receive because of the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't receive the Holy Spirit because of your obedience. You have received the Holy Spirit because of the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't receive eternal life yes. because of your obedience. No. You receive eternal life yes. because of the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. our jubilee, hallelujah, Amen. has brought God to cancel the debt. How did God cancel every debt mm. we could ever have? Mm. By requiring the life of his son, Jesus Christ. The work he did yes. on the cross. Amen. The power yes. of his blood. Yes. God canceled every debt by which you could owe him or anyone. Amen. Amen. Now, that is very difficult for many people. 
I will tell you why. Why are people in debt? Because they don't know. Mm. The enemy has taken advantage for people to, who do not know to deceive them mm. they have a debt. And whole nations are being deceived. America is being deceived by $51 trillion uh, debt. Weighing it down. America is saying, how are we going to do this? Kenya is being deceived. Mm. I want you to understand this. This yes. world mm. is mm. a world in darkness. Yes. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 2. Yeah. The prophet Isaiah speaking by the Spirit says, Darkness covers the earth. Deep darkness the peoples of the earth. In Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah again by the Spirit speaks about how Lucifer has deceived the nations. Nations are deceived. Mm. Cities are deceived. Yes. Businesses are deceived. Yes. Families are deceived. Yes. Marriages are deceived. Mm. Children are deceived. People are deceived. Yes. But it is time for the truth. And this service is a truth revealing service. I want us to go to the gospel according to John chapter 8 verses 31 and verses 32. This is Jesus himself. I want you to understand what he meant and how you can apply it with the debt you are dealing with and the debt your city is dealing with, family may be dealing with, business may be dealing with. I'm telling you, this is serious business. The power of the Holy Spirit is present to confirm every word that we are sharing here tonight. Honey, please read John 8, 31 and 32. <clears throat> the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Listen, Jesus is telling us, if you hold to my teaching, if you hold to my doctrine, mm -hmm. there's a difference between holding to a teaching mm -hmm. and merely listening to it. Mm -hmm. Most people merely read their Bible. They don't study. Holding involves study. Amen. Studying. And you do that by opening the Bible and reading one account and comparing it with other accounts that relate to that account. I always tell people, the Bible interprets itself. Mm -hmm. What you read in one verse has so many other verses that back it up. Now listen to this. When you study, when you hold the teaching of Christ Jesus, the doctrine of Christ Jesus, he promises you, you will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. Listen, you don't need to go to a witch doctor mm. to clear a debt. Amen. Your debt was clear. Amen. You need to go to the truth. Yes. You need to go to the truth. Yes. Now, when you are careless with the truth, the enemy takes advantage when you don't hold the teaching of Christ. When you do not hold the doctrine of Christ, the enemy takes advantage. Remember, he comes in by the back door. What is the back door? The flesh. He uses the flesh of men to bring in fear. He uses the flesh of men to bring in lies. He uses the flesh of men to bring in unbelief. And so, by reason of unbelief and fear and worry, many fail to hold the teaching of Christ. And so, they get punished. They get punished by things which, if they held the truth, they would not be punished by. They would be free. Amen. You can compare this with Joseph. Okay? Joseph was a son of Jacob, who was a son of Isaac, who was a son of Abraham. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had covenants they had made with God Amen. that spoke concerning their children. Yes. Now, the covenant they had with God spoke about their children being rulers among Gentiles. 
But Joseph found himself among the Gentiles in prison. He was not supposed to be in prison. Why was Joseph in prison? You will say to me by your Bible reading that he was in prison because Potiphar's wife wanted to mol molest him and he, he declined her invitations and, and so she, she lied about him, falsely accusing him for raping her and, she will, and, and Joseph was thrown in prison. That's not the real reason. Yes. That is the simple reason. The real reason Joseph was in prison because he did not know the truth. He did not know well enough the covenant that his fathers had made with God. Yes. In that covenant, no one was supposed to hold him captive. Yes. No one mm. was supposed to rule over him. Yes. He was a ruler by that covenant. Yes. That was the truth about Joseph. But he lived a lie. He became a prisoner. The prison was a lie. But he was living a lie. And like you. You are living a lie. Fearing death. You are living a lie. You say everybody has a debt. No, they don't. Neither do you. But you are living a lie. And it is unfortunate that many people love lies more than they love the truth. There is even a hip-hop artist. Some years back, he was a, a white guy. Uh, what was his name? I think my daughter may know his name. What was the white guy's name who used to do hip hop with 50 cents, that entire group? Uh, he, well, he used to be famous. You see, this is the problem with the fame of the world. They forget you. We cannot forget Moses, Jesus, and such people. But <laughs> this guy, not to pack, it's not a white guy, he's a black guy. This guy yeah. sang a song and said, I love the way you lie to me. Mm -hmm. And people were dancing to it. I love the way you lie to me. I love the way you lie to me. Why do you love lies? Lies are very punishing. Lies are very cruel. The lies of Satan seek to steal from you, to kill you, to destroy you. You don't need to love lies. You need to love the truth. Joseph suffered in prison because of lies. I'm not talking about the false witness of the wife of Potiphar. No, the lie that he could be put in bondage. Many of you believe, oh, someone bewitched me. Someone worked on it against me. It's a lie. No one can work against you. Amen. They are working against your ignorance. Joseph was in prison because he was ignorant of the covenant that he had, his fathers had made with God, mm. by which he was supposed to be a ruler. Yes. And the psalmist in 105, the Psalm 105, mm. about the 17th, the 22nd verse, speaks about this and says, Joseph was put in bones and fetters of iron mm. and kept in prison until the word of God tested him. Amen. Tested him in prison. Yes. And when the word of God proved him, mm. he came out to rule. Hallelujah. Why did Joseph come out of prison? Mm. Not because someone had convinced Pharaoh that he, ha he had not uh, molested Potiphar's wife. He came out of prison because he finally believed the covenant of his fathers. Amen. Someone tonight, you must believe the covenant Jesus Christ yes. mediated between us and God Amen. and filled with his own blood. Yes. And in that covenant, yes. he canceled your debt. Amen. Canceled your debt. He said that was 2,000 years ago. I hadn't yet got to the debt. The work of the cross, the power of the blood is an eternal work. Amen. It is a recurring work. Oh, yes. It is working even now as I'm teaching Glory. to you. It didn't just work. Haven't you heard the song about the blood of Jesus? It says it will never, never, ever lose its power. Amen. Never, ever lose its power. Mm. And the power of the blood 
canceled your date, mm -hmm. but you are afraid you have a date. You are afraid because you are not holding the truth. You are not holding the teaching of Christ. You are holding the fears of men. You are holding the traditions and customs of men. You are holding the ways of a corrupt world. But tonight uh, the Lord has sent us to you to wake you up and tell you, uh, yes. daughter of Zion, uh, son of God, uh, yes. you are free. Uh, yes. The son has set you free. Uh, you are free of your data. Amen. Come on. Yes. Believe the truth. Alleluia. Jesus said, you shall know the truth if you hold my teaching. Oh, yes. Then the truth shall set you free. Amen. You don't even need to set yourself free. Mm. Oh, brother, you know, I have to pay this debt. I need you to be free. I'm paying the bank. I'm paying. I'm paying until I be free. You want to set yourself free. Jesus told you, rest. He says, come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, mm. and I will give you rest. He said, my yoke is light. Mm. You are supposed to be resting. In the covenant you have with God, God does the work. And Jesus represented God yes. in obeying the gospel. He died in your place yes. to fulfill all the promises of God. Amen. Now listen to this. Your debt is paid. Amen. That's what Jesus did on the cross. Yes. Now you say, ah, how does that happen? How does that directly apply to my debt? Listen to this. You owed God. Before you think about all these other fellas you think you owe, you owed God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus paid with his blood whatever you owed God. Now, God, his debt with you has been settled by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you have settled your account with God. Mm. No one has a right mm. to claim an account with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In the gospel according to Matthew, I believe it's the 18th chapter, mm. there is an account given about a king mm -hmm. who had a slave who owed him money. A servant who owed him money. And this king required his money to be paid, but the servant was unable to pay it. So the servant negotiated with the king. He implored the king to forgive him because he couldn't pay the debt, and the king forgave him. When that servant was going out of the palace, he found another servant who owed him money, and he said, you must pay me my money. And he got the soldiers and they arrested this other servant and they put him in the prison until he paid the money. The report reached the king mm -hmm. that, hey, listen to this. The other servant, did you not forgive him? Yet he has put another servant who owes him in prison. And the king said, I will put him in prison until he has paid the last coin. The moral of that parable mm. is very simple. After God cancelled the debt of all men, no man has the right yes. to claim a debt yes. of another man. Amen. That's the moral of that parable. Mm. Mm. Are you understanding? Yes. <laughs> now, are you going to fear your data or your are you going to fear your God? God? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Amen. Choose to fear God. Amen. Joseph mm. got to know the truth. That's why the truth worked for him. Amen. The truth can work for you. Yes. The moment Joseph began to believe the covenants that his fathers had made with God, that made him a ruler, Pharaoh got a dream. He could not interpret it. Mm. No wise man, no sorcerer, no magician could interpret it. The covenant God made with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob mm. was more powerful than sorcerers. It was more powerful than magicians. Amen. It was more powerful than the wise men Amen. in the court of Pharaoh. Yes. Now, that covenant was much weaker than the covenant you have 
with God, mediated by Jesus Christ. Yes. The covenant of Christ Jesus mm. exceeds the measure of any witchcraft, Amen. of any sorcery, Amen. of any demon. Amen. Maybe a demon convinced you mm. to borrow. Mm. Maybe a demon convinced you that you have a debt. Mm. I break its power in the Amen. name of Jesus. Read John chapter 8, verses 36. If you continue in my word, then shall you be my disciples. Then shall the truth set you free. free. Look at verses 36. So if the Son sets you free, mm. you will be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Yes. Imagine you are free indeed, but you don't know. Your problem is not the death. Mm. Your problem is the lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are like the man who fears a shadow. You're in the room in the dark and you see a shadow and you think it is a, it, it is a ghost is coming for you and it is just your jacket badly or position in a way and, and you are fearing your shadow. You are very convinced you are finished tonight. No, you are not finished. Amen. You are foolish. Yes. This is the problem. Yes. The world is full of foolishness. Mm. Whole nations, they elect a fool. He says he's their leader. And he's, he says, I'm going to collect a debt. I'm going to clear a debt. Who is telling you to clear a debt? The debt was cleared by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. What you need is to know what was done. Yes. That which you know will work for you. Hallelujah. Hey. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus went into a synagogue. Mm. There was a woman who was bent double. Mm. She could not stand up straight. It was the Sabbath. Jesus called her in Matthew mm. chapter 18 as well. He called her and said, stand up. You are well. And the woman stood up immediately. And some of the teachers of the law were angry. They said, it is the Sabbath. How have you healed this woman? There are six days to work, but to this day, you're not supposed to do this. Jesus said, is this not a daughter of Abraham? Yes. 18 years! A daughter of Abraham did not know the covenant had made her free. 18 years! She suffered a sickness. She should not have suffered. Because she was a daughter of Abraham. Mm. She was fortunate. She met a teacher who knew the covenant of Abraham. Hallelujah. Abraham's children mm. do not fall sick. Yes. Abraham's children mm. do not be have infirmities. Yes. He said to her, stand up, you are healed. He did not say, stand up so that you get healed. He said, stand up, you are healed. Amen. When was that woman healed? In the covenant of Abraham. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Do you see that? Yes. Because Jesus knew the covenant, mm. that truth set that woman free. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You need to know you are in the jubilee of Jesus Christ. If the jubilee of Moses mm. could get men Hallelujah. to forgive their debt. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory. A jubilee of Moses. Mm. And Moses was a servant mm. in the house of God. And Jesus is a son. The firstborn son yes. of God. If the covenant of Moses could get men to forgive death. Yes. Now what about the covenant of Jesus Christ? Where God himself has plagued to work in that covenant. In that covenant, God said, let the people rest. I will work. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you continue holding to my word, you will know the truth. Amen. This is the truth. Yes. Your debt has been wiped off. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. Amen. You believe this truth. You begin to work with this truth. Mm. What I mean, what I mean by working with this truth, I mean meditating on it. I mean studying on it. Mm. 
I mean praying on it. Yes. Go before God and say, Father, mm. I have had the man of God yes. and he has said that we are in a heavenly mm. jubilee. He has said that in that jubilee, yes. you worked, you worked for me. Yes. He has said in that jubilee, mm. you canceled my data. Yes. Oh God, I refuse the data. Yes. I hold the truth. Yes. Believe you me, mm. that truth will work for you. Amen. Amen. I want us to go to Romans chapter 8, verses 33 and verses 34. Romans chapter 8, verses 33 and verses 34. And then I will be out of your face so that you can work with your God, <laughs> believing the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to do some work tonight. Hallelujah. Don't just go and sleep. Mm. Okay? Go before God and say, I have heard your word. Yes, Lord. Kumbe, I didn't have a debt. Mm. I have been so foolish. Repent foolishness. Don't just repent fornication. Repent foolishness. Mm. Foolishness is a sin. You didn't know? To be foolish is a sin. In fact, God says my people perish because they are foolish. Mm. It is a sin which can lead to death. Repent foolishness. Mm. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. Then you will test and see that acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. Verses 34. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Who is, who is he that condemned? Christ Jesus who died. More than that. Who was raised to life. Is at the right hand of God. And is also interceding for us. <sighs> oh my God help you find the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says it is the glory of God to hide the matter. And it is for kings to search it out. Mm. Now, in the covenant you have with God, you are a king. Search out the matter. God has in it, hidden it in the covenant. Get into that covenant. Open the covenant. Search out the matter. Amen. And find the truth. Hallelujah. Jesus said, seek and you shall find. Amen. Find the truth. Yes. What I mean by finding the truth is it becomes strong in your heart. Mm. It becomes stronger than the fear yes. of the death. Amen. It becomes stronger than the fear mm. of men. Mm. It becomes strong in your heart. The Son has set me free. I am free indeed. Yes. God has redeemed me of any claim. Once that begins to be strong in your heart, that truth begins to work. Amen. Your Pharaoh will get a dream. Hallelujah. That only you can interpret. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready for interpretation. Mm. You are about to come out of bondage. Hallelujah. You are about to come out of the jailhouse. Yes. You are about to come out of fear. Hallelujah. You are about to come out of worry. Glory. You are about to come out of darkness. Amen. You are about to come before kings. Yes. You are about to rule. Amen. You are about to ascend. Hallelujah. You are going higher. Yes. Someone say, I'm going higher. I'm going higher. You belong there. Yes. You belong on the top. Amen. You don't belong to, to, to worry. You don't belong to sadness. Yes. You don't belong to fear. Amen. You don't belong to depression. Oh, yes. yes, you made a mistake you borrowed. Uh -huh. Yes, you made a mistake. It was covered by the blood. Amen. It was covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you were weak. When you are weak, God is strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. wants to be your strength. Mm. You don't have to be strong. You just have to rely on the strength of God. Let God be strong for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can God be strong for you tonight? Yes. He says, if God lays no charge against you, if God does not accuse you, he says, who has the right to condemn you? Who? He says, no one. Jesus himself who would condemn you, hallelujah, Amen. is forever making intercession for you. <laughs> Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, if there is anyone to claim anything from you, yes. it is Jesus. But instead of Jesus claiming mm. what you owe him, he's making intercession for you. That is what everyone who you owe should be doing. He should be praying for you. 
Glory. Hallelujah. You understand? If Jesus, mm. who laid down his life, yes. who shed his blood, Amen. cannot accuse you, instead, he's before God mm. making intercession Hallelujah. for you, there is an anointing in this service to Amen. make your data, mm. to make a prayer for you. They are not just going to cancel your date. They are going to go on their knees yes. and say, Lord, I release them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, yes. Angels are being dispatched on this mission. Amen. Now, I want to speak to nations. Okay? Yes. Nations. Kenya. <laughs> America. All these false nations. <laughs> Your debts are cancelled. Wake up to the two nations you belong to. You belong to Zion. Amen. That's where you really belong. Mm. All of you were bought by the blood of the Lamb. The reason you are being deceived to have debts is you believe you are America. The reason you believe you have a debt is you are deceived you are Kenya. The moment you begin to believe that you are Zion, Amen. no one can charge Zion. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the truth. Yes. You want to walk away from the five to 55 trillion debt. You don't even need to negotiate. Mr. Biden, you don't need to negotiate with Congress. Mr. Ruto, you don't need to negotiate with the IMF or World Bank. Wake up. There is no Kenya. There is no America. Mm. There is only one nation. One holy nation. Amen. First Peter chapter 2 verses 9. Mm. You are a holy mm. nation. Mm. A chosen generation. Mm. A royal priesthood. Mm. The moment you wake up to know yes. that this is Zion. Yes. Every